Hey Fresno, thank you for joining in to today's show. I have Susie Harder with the Junior Authors Program. She created this beautiful uh, program because of the Creek Fire and she's originally from Toll House and what this entails is children get to vote online and publish a book from start to beginning and it's down to every single detail. Susie is an accomplished woman so I'll let her tell you all about herself because she's amazing. So hi Susie, she's via Zoom right now. How are you? Hi Janine, thanks for having me today. Absolutely. So um, tell us briefly about your, your quick journey into starting this gigantic program that's getting just worldwide steam. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, so I'm a speech pathologist and my aim and mission is to bring joy and confidence and communication to kids. And so I spend all day, every day having these wonderful one-on-one -on -one conversations with children and supporting them through some really tough moments and, uh, and parents the same. And so I, when the Creek Fire started, you know, it, it just kind of launched me into this, oh my gosh, what can I do to help? That That's really, you know, kind of under the concept of participatory philanthropy, like that we're actively doing something. And, um, and so it, it launched me into this whole kind of, okay, well, if I work with kids and my aim is to bring, you know, this joy and positivity into their world, let's start with, and it started with this idea of, you know, as a speech pathologist, we use books for everything. And so that's how we lead into conversations. That's how we teach, you know, language skills and academic things. And so I thought, okay, well, if we can make this really amazing healing book that, you know, is light and fun, but it also has all of this really intentional kind of, um, like conversational starters for all of these specific things that are happening for these families, um, that could be something that's really helpful and brings a lot of connection between parents and children or children and children. And then, so I got up that next day, it was like, like a one day turnaround. I woke up that next morning and wrote a book before my children got up for the day. And I was kind of like, okay, well now I have to publish this. I don't know how to do that. Uh, and as I was learning about it, it just brought me so much joy. The things that I was finding out that happened behind the scenes when you take your rough draft into all of those stages of editing and illustrations and formatting and, you know, eventually into printing and publishing. And the side of me that works with kids was just kind of like, I can't not share this with kids. This is so phenomenal. And so let's go. And so I just kind of put together what is it that I think would be a really impactful way for us to involve kids. And it ended up being a voting-based platform. And so I can hear from kids on what is it that they want in the book and to hear their ideas and to really, you know, I think during COVID it's so hard because everyone's in survival mode. And uh, what that ends up being for a lot of students and children that I work with is that their voice isn't always heard because we're just trying to kind of make it through. And they have a lot of um, like, here's the things you can't do and here's the things you shouldn't do and here's the things you have to do. And so I thought, oh, I really would like to give kids, here's the thing you get to do. And, um, and so they get to be a part of this really collaborative process of making a book. And so uh, this week's voting is about Ava and she's building a doghouse for Charlie. And so the three, uh, items that uh, the children get to vote on is the, the type of dog house and there's a planter box for a garden and then her uh, Ava's water bottle and, yeah. and the sticker that gets to go on so the yeah. children get uh, down to the littlest detail that they truly are creating and deciding uh, what this book is going to be about and then you were also uh, telling me that they get to learn how to vote and how important it is to vote on a on a grander scheme and when they get to be 18. 
Yeah. You know, and there's a term called disguised learning. And I feel like all of us as adults have kind of perfected that, you know, in the sense of we're going to present this in a really fun way. And it is, I mean, kids, when I log on for my sessions, they're like, oh my gosh, okay, so here's what I was thinking about this vote. And can we do this? And so, and I have parents saying, you know, my child will finish their packet just so they can go online and find what activities are available for the book this week and how to, you know, so it really is engaging, but there's so many deep rooted, really empowering messages that are intentionally built in and one of which is voting and the importance of having your voice heard and taking time to vote and so like you said this week we're focusing on the rebuild and in the story um they're out exploring and they hear sirens and they come back and charlie's dog house has burnt and so the you know, the action side of Ava and the hero side of her kind of springs into, okay, well, what can I be doing to help in this situation? I don't have a lot, but I can help. And so what do I do? And so kids are voting on kind of the core structure of the rebuild of his doghouse, which ends up being this community kind of togetherness rebuild. But um, so they have some different options that they get to choose from. And then that's the one that will go in the book. And then we talk about the impact of plants and really that's rooted in, you know, teaching kids about reforestation and the environment and kind of all these parts. But we get to decide, you know, what plants and like planter is she building? And then is she going to make a garden or what is it that she's going to do? And then her water bottle. Um, yeah, we have some stickers to add on. And so it is, it's really fun because they get to have this contribution and for kids who are directly impacted by the fire, when we're highlighting them, it's not because of loss, it's because of contribution and for the things that they're doing to help us with this book um, that ultimately benefits kids who lost homes. All the, you know, 100% of the proceeds go back to kids who lost homes, so. And, and one um, child, her name is Paige Gillette, and she was highlighted in a newspaper, newspaper article and she really did lose her home and, and she talked about how um, her grandpa and her dad were trying to save her cat and looking for the cat and when they were leaving and, and she's highlighted in your um, like a student of the week. Yes. And so she uh, tell us about her because her story sounds really special and sad. Yes. And, you know, I mean, every child that was affected by the fire um it, there's just there's so much you know kind of that like deep i want to help and i think anyone who hears our story is kind of like oh my gosh you know and then thinking about it from the parent perspective so her parents um tara and ty uh, lost their home and their family business cressman's and cressman's was there since 1904 and um ty has a really amazing heroic story of staying to protect, you know, and making sure that everyone on their way down the hill with evacuations was taken care of and had the supplies they need. And um, he has so many, you know, great interviews. I'll let him speak more to that. But he, I mean, was really, really a hero in so many ways. And uh, and Paige is, they have two children and then Paige. And um, so Paige was our junior author of the week last week. And so I got to interview her and we highlighted her in the local paper, the Mountain Press. And growing up in that community, I remember like the two times that I was ever in the Mountain Press, I remember them so vividly and the picture that was there and what the story was about. And so, you know, being able to bring joy to these kids and again, not because of loss, but because of the rebuild and the things that are coming together and kind of the hope and the possibility and that together, you know, just all of those things that are really the focus right now. And so um, the paper that's coming out today um, highlights the Wood Brothers and Stolen and Maverick have a fabulous interview. So I'll post that on my Facebook. Um, and anyone who's up in the hills and grabs the Mountain Press, you'll be able to see. Um, Stolen has some amazing quotes about rebuild and kind of like the new clean start and acknowledging and validating what has been lost but also moving into that next phase and he's 11 and he's just prolific and wonderful to talk to so that will be a really fun article for people to read too and on your website uh, juniorauthorsprogram.com there is 
a ton of information about uh, you having videos where um, they can speak to you, it says speak to the author, um, mm -hmm. and, and there's an invitation, there's how you can donate. Um, there's also information about your illustrator named Lily from France. How did you find her? How did you two connect? Oh, what a great question. Uh, I Part of my goal going into this book was I'm going to make this a really, really, really good book. And it's not going to be thrown together. It's going to be fabulous. And so I went on this search to find the exact right illustrator for what we were doing. And um, I ended up interviewing, I think, 46 or 47 illustrators worldwide. And she was the one that there was something about her style and just her as a person. And she has a six-year-old daughter. Um, she's originally from China and now lives in France. And, uh, you know, she just has this really interesting, you know, kind of combination of skills. And so uh, she's been phenomenal to work with. So, yeah, so there's kind of like her information on the website. Uh, the voting links are all on there. So that stays up to date. Um, any of the Ask the Author Live. And we have one tonight so people can put their questions in. And really the goal is to give kids direct access to someone that they can ask those questions to. And, um, you know, if they are not enjoying writing, which some kids don't, you know, what you know, what is it that could be, you know, the suggestions from someone who's gone through the process. And I, you know, keep telling kids the amount of times I've edited and redone certain sentences and wording for this is astronomical. And so, you know, when teachers ask you to edit something, it's really not because they're mean. It's because that's really what you do <laughs> when you're turning something into something good. Um, and so, yeah, so everything is on there, you know, just that sense of connectedness. So this week we had a variety of schools that the principal is hosting a Zoom vote and principals get to connect with their students in a way that, you know, I hadn't really thought about it until I started talking to some of the local principals that, you know, they don't get to see students the same way. And so they're really just kind of behind the scenes dealing with all the stuff of this school year. And so those of uh, those schools that have done the principal vote, we set it up and I come in, we do a Zoom poll and we, you know, like get, you know, everyone's opinions from the whole school. And it's just it's such a joy and it is really so much fun. So I think the, the level of connectedness in this really weird situation right now, um, there's something really powerful about that. And, you know, teaching kids about the collaborative process and that, you know, you don't always get your way, but that's not really the main thing. The main thing is it will be beautiful in the end as long as we, you know, if everyone has a chance to share their opinion and we respect other people's opinions and, you know, it all comes together. And so there's a lot of fun conversations that I get to have with kids about what we're doing. Absolutely. And I watched a couple of your videos that you make for the, the kids and they're really cute because there's one you're talking about Lily the illustrator she drew uh, the kids some color pages and you're digging in a backpack and then you pretend to bring out uh, like a pretend burrito or <laughs> there was like a carrot or something in there and so your videos are really cute and meant for children so uh, you're right on par for bringing positivity but and it's, it's super I fun. I don't have anything prepped right now but you know like we'll do do something like this is tap this is our um mascot and tap like the mic tap with the idea of you know we want kids to have their voice be heard you know so we'll do like oh he's gotten a what does he have he has a note for us oh, it's an award your class just got an award what you know and so we do just uh, we make it light we make it fun uh, we have you know like a video bank of kind of like three to five minute clips that teachers can run for their class that have, you know, a variety of topics. Um, it is, we, we just like to have fun and bring some happiness. Uh, so, I mean, it was really sweet. Like Paige's mom, after we, uh, after I last spoke with Paige and we kind of had this beautiful, you know, just time together and interview and her mom said, oh my gosh, she's been so smiley since she talked with you. And those types of moments are really impactful. And, and the reason that, you know, I'm pouring so much heart and time into this. Yeah. And it's, thank you. You're doing a wonderful thing and you, you, you're doing it for other people in the good of the community and, and to help others, and that's so important. 
and and thank you for coming on the show today um, and sharing your story and sharing it with others so others can find out about you and, and donate to your cause and buy your book when it's published. And it'll be on Amazon, correct, when it's all finished, or will there be other outlets people can to purchase it? We'll have a local um, kids book release party. So those kids that did lose homes will be signing as the junior authors and selling it. Um, and that is projected to be April 17th. And then, yes, in terms of kind of, it will be available on Amazon and anyone can buy it. And then everything goes towards those kids. Great. And and thank you, Susie. You've been a joy to talk to. And and thank you, Fresno, for for looking into Susie's um, passion and what she's doing and helping her community and uh, the people impacted by the Creek Fire. And I'd also like to thank Molly Meeker at Bay Equity for sponsoring the show. I do have two more guests coming on after Susie, so please come back and stay with us. Thank you, Susie. Bye. Thank you. Bye.